What's up, YT World? Just your girl, La Kiki, Miss D. That I see that that is. And I'm coming at you with that real Housewives of Atlanta. That's Roa. Yes, season 15, episode um, 7, I believe. Uh, let me. Yeah, episode 7. Um, was I on the wrong episode list? Hmm, was it episode seven? I think it is. Keeping it Gucci, unless I wrote it down wrong and put six on it, because I could have sworn the last thing I did was Roa season 15 episode. Five drama for your mama. Was drama for your mama five or was that six? I don't know. I forgot. But anyway, I got a bunch of notes, Um, and a lot of it is like me just being thorough and efficient um but i don't need to be like shit because it's another filler episode for me like this is a definite filler i mean it's a must needed talk filler but it's a filler um but everybody want to know the follow-up from the blowout so of course this is um needed at the moment so um i'm gonna try to get through this video real quick because uh yeah i left my husband and my um my son inside the house and I got this these bad A kids out here running running amok like they don't have no freaking YMCA nothing no boys and girls club I guess it's over packed crowd or whatever um yeah and on top of that I'm trying to get out the goddamn going doorway of the apartment building and I'm like why do you have the kids sitting on a doorway with a little chihuahua um dog right there blocking a the whole doorway tap 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 okay you don't understand tap 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 one more time and then it's gonna blow your back out you're gonna feel it uh thank your sister <laughs> for doing the dumb shit but anyway that's how i feel about that but let's get on with that because i already wasted two minutes on nothing this ass kids in this neighborhood uh <laughs> so you know i'd be taking notes scene by scene so normally i wouldn't want to do this at all you know i've skipped to the good parts in my earlier days of youtube and now and i'm all fake thorough or whatever but some days i'm telling you i'm going to go off the cuff and um off the cuffs and heck i'm messing up like marlo <laughs> caspistotic caspistotic <laughs> i forgot i gotta go back and look at what she said but contrastic could chalk it and, and could chalk it girl you can't talk catastrophic like what is i think she was saying catastrophic or she was saying um oh oh oh, oh. don't get me the lion but i'm gonna plant it in here somewhere but anyway that girl do have a heavy tongue and she don't know what she talking about country is hell with no knowledge at all what she's saying out of her mouth she just say, say whatever sounds like a smart I was just like, so you're giving another meme about yourself and making yourself seem even lower, but just don't talk. Just accept whatever they say they saying about you and then what the producer saying, oh, that's what they said? Oh, okay, that's what they saying? Okay, I'll take that. Um, can you repeat what I just said to you? No, I, I no ma'am, I won't do that. You trying to make a meme out of me? No, I won't. You should just accept that. Her instead of, she's like, I think that's right. I think that's how you say it. Uh, uh, cat cat Anastatic, anastatic no girl i don't even know if it was catastrophic uh it was another word for that um but three minutes waste <laughs> so we had a first scene with uh drew and her former friend music producer named rage he joins her for lunch and she basically goes over wanting to work with him wanting um him to do her music video and single um and he basically telling her she, she was like oh you remember you know i i know you'd had things that you've done in the past or whatever she was like yeah step up he was like step who <laughs> step where step up you don't remember i was part of the first one not 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 the five remakes that they have out there but not chanatana one um, that everybody only remember because of him and his relationship that end up failing after the non-chemistry after being married for so long and making kids and she wasn't stepping up to the plate like she used to and so wasn't he um, and then you know it all failed you know and now he's on Magic Mike selling that ad you know what I'm saying not that one I was on the first one the first 
the first step up one. You remember that Sean Paul video? And I was like, don't, 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 don't. Hey, she was giving Beyonce in that video. But um, yeah, I love Drew when she was, um, give it to me. Yeah, I remember that song. Uh, and I remember the freaking Keisha Cole sounded like she was on her last cancer bed. Um, like she was on the freaking, you know what I'm saying, hospice and shit. But anyway, remember that. Drew was the ish back then. But she still broke up Melanie and Derwin, so we would never forgive you. Uh, and that girl from, um, also that's Mike Epps' baby mother in the show, um, on Netflix. <laughs> we won't forgive you neither for further breaking up Melanie when they had a chance in Derwin. Now we don't want Derwin now that we've seen him on his other shows looking plump as hell. Good, good moving, Melody. And in real life, Melody, keep moving on as well. I always loved her and that guy from 17 again. So make that happen. But anyway, six minutes wasted. <laughs> Here go my extra rants. Uh, so yeah, she, she was like, she explained it to him. He was like, oh, okay. Um, she wants Drew to possibly think of recasting um, her husband because um, he has some sexy men that are coming to town for auditions and he don't know if Ralph's abs are gonna be up to par. So he like, maybe you might want to think about yourself. He might, Ralph gonna have to take a back seat to your video, his wife, he wants you to thrive now. So you take a back seat to your wife, you know? It shouldn't have been no talk about that. <sighs> then we have Sanya with her fake ass and, and uh, fake and fake, fake and faker, faker and fake, joke and joker, <laughs> Riddler and the joker. Um, Sanya and Shireen meets up for, uh, what's it, cryo, cryo? cryo? cryotherapy um i guess it's freezing deep freezing your tissues your fatty tissues and eventually eliminate them or put them in a fatty bucket pretty much in your insides and basically to be wasted out your butthole basically <laughs> like i mean where else it's going it's going it's, it's freezing the cells up so they can slide through the freaking rest of the tubes and go to your waste basket which is your butthole um but anyway Cry, cryotherapy or whatever. Um, Sanya is pressed to say about um, mentioning Rihanna's um, being, oh, she by Sheree was mentioned by Riri. Uh, uh, hell no, girl. No, it was not. I said, all she said, all she said was, I love Sheree Whitfield. Girl, stop it. Girl, stop it. Then she gonna call Candy. Uh, it's, it's so good to be, um, <laughs> received by others um phenomenal women uh, instead of the haters <coughs> like candy uh the only one who was in your corner the most was candy and a little bit of kenya but candy really saying where's your shiba sheree coming out she even you even came to the candy factory and she came to you and she was willing to lay out a business plan with you and willing to she probably was even willing to put some money into it with you when she saw that you were serious and the cd pieces that you had and all that she was willing to do all that but what did you do you put a pause on things put your foot on things uh been secretive telling everybody yeah it's going to come out it's going to come out oh don't worry about it i got it together oh i got my people i got my people oh yeah there is it's getting flown in it's coming from this and that. oh no don't worry about it oh no i let you know uh, like you was being so secretive about it all the whole time you could have been getting help for it candy reached out to you so many god on times to get help for the she by charade because she was saying this is your thing girl this is what you are good at fitness and i believe in you this business will be a great business now come on with this business plan if you just don't got the business part it's okay to say i don't have a business part friend friend can you help me out on the business part because i don't have that part but i know this is what i want to do but i don't know how about about going about this like you do so come on friend help me with the help me with the no but she probably felt like oh if candy helped me out then she gonna want a piece of what she helped me out with and then i can't take the credit for being my own business minded you know self 
because once again candy always wins helping people out and i and she's the business person and i'm not looked at as a business person i'm looked at as she helped that friend get that business or she's still helping people get money so what the like i don't care i don't care how she helped me out long she helped me out i do not care if you can help me out now i'll be back hey bigger like keep sweat uh candy help me out okay business flourishing yeah, it's all because of candy. It's it's definitely all because of candy. I donate to the whatever, um, candy coated nights, candy coated click, whatever. Not click. <laughs> Not click. But you know what I'm saying? I I, I dare gonna dedicate any money, little ten percent, like you put ten percent in the church, or like thereof. We all know who we are. But anyway, and I say we. But um, yeah, like literally. I don't give a god dag on long as you help me get my crap off the ground it's looking more dumber me saying i'm a business person and it's 15 plus years me coming out with a daggone fashion show the first fashion show flop then this fashion show it went well uh by the by the hinge of its tail um or stitches <laughs> like thereof um and then no sale talk about something more like <laughs> she broke the internet more like no girl you're still wrong <laughs> You're still on. You only broke the internet off of not breaking anything on your website. That's the only internet part you broke, girl. Girl, Rihanna didn't mention you for that. She watched the dag on show. She liked everybody from the show, and she like I love me some Sharae Winfield. Uh, Winfield. She loves your fashion and all that stuff. But she ain't saying no. She by Sharae doing anything. You need to ask your friend if you don't want to ask Candy because Candy is on your level on the show right now. You know, far as show level. We ain't talking about level level, but show level. Won't you ask your good Judy then? Rihanna, uh, Rihanna, can I have some um, um Fenty Beauty um advice? You know, she about charade to Fenty Beauty um uh, sister sis. You know, and I bet you you take that advice. But anyway, girl, stop that. Um, they discuss why everybody else left the event. Like I understand why Candy left the event. Why everybody else had to follow her? Cause girl, nobody f's with y'all. Y'all don't understand. Drew don't f with you. Can can uh, Kenya don't f with you. No, no, she definitely don't f with you. She f with Sheree, but Sheree, she already know Sheree fake around her other friends. You ain't gonna have my back. You just gonna be fake as hell too. I don't f with you when you like that and around that hoe. I'm going for. I know it's gonna be just like Candy in situation, and I'm not gonna put myself in it. And um. And what's her face just still trying to prove herself that she on Candy's side, pretty much. And she could take up for Candy. She's not trying to she's trying to pick a side and not ride the fence like Sanya. But actually Sanya's actually she actually picked her side. Every episode, I don't understand why this saying she's riding the fence. She's clearly saying that I'm with the other team and this is this is this is this is up. You know, the only reason why she's even choosing Candy in the beginning is because of like they said. Marlo called her out followers <laughs> and you're not lying and now she's trying to prove a point with a friendship with Marlo that it's not all about candy and King is following but when you first entered the show and it was all about that freaking um uh what is it um what is um uh, what is saying your little line let me go back and see if I can find it in my notes uh where is that in my notes hmm Where is that at going? Uh, eh. I can't even find it. I think it's um in the other part. But um anyway, yeah, pretty much. Um, so Sheree wants to gather the girls uh with a theme, talking about some let's keep it Gucci for a brunch, and she's having this brunch, and it's the theme. It's called let's keep it Gucci. It's always about some dag on um labels. Like, let's just keep it funky. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't know what the theme should be. No theme. Like, how about let's just go to brunch? Let's just go to brunch. <laughs> how about we we throw it back to freaking... If it's the main thing about this brunch was going to be about Candy and Marlo's um, situation, we could have just called the Let's Kick It Brunch, uh, Layback and relax your feet brunch uh get it together far as um well 
that's a different rule. But we could have still it's still in the genre of candy in them era. So let's get it together. <laughs> Something, you know. But anyway. Um Sanya wants uh what I say Sanya wants to talk about uh talk to Candy. I was like to get her uh well she was like to get her side because she thinks the other girls put extra sauce on this story. I'm like, girl, no, they didn't put no sauce on the story. It exactly was like it was told. That hoe fabricated so that she can drag her deceased um nephew in the conversation to make Candy look further bad and also make her business look bad to make her brand go down, to make her business go down so that you can build yourself up. I don't know how you would be building yourself up anyway when nobody would trust you because that's supposed to be your close girlfriend, right? And you say y'all this close, but you drag her down like that. Nobody would want to do business with you after they, if you discovered something and uncovered something about Candy and nobody want to deal with her, they will equally still not deal with you. But thanks for letting us know that we can't deal with her neither, but we don't want to pick up nothing up with you. So I don't know where you was getting out of this. You weren't getting anything and saying, stay out of the business. You need to be worried more about what's going on with your husband out there in Houston and your sister and your brother and when they're going to run you your money for the household that they're not having their job is obviously so what you doing about that what time y'all moving um mom and dad what y'all gonna do um and do see yeah i need a nanny for him so uh yeah that's that's all the business you need to manage you know um then marlo meets up with courtney this is a relevant scene but uh, this is a back and forth scene between this scene which is scene three and scene four with uh Sandy and candy meet up at og but Marlo and Courtney meet up first. Marlo um, said, "Oh, I was, I was, <laughs> I was um, laughing because uh, I was saying Marlo when she was like, oh, I want that shrimp. What's that shrimp called? Um, uh, <laughs> girl, you ain't want to say that shrimp name. Don't you know when you look at the menu and you just look at the book? Let me look. You just looking at the book and you just like, um, yeah, that um, that shrimp, shrimp, um, shrimp, shrimp." Um, shrimp. Uh, that's, I love that that shrimp. This this one right here, this one. Yeah, I have that. Uh, uh huh. Uh, the shrimp shrimpalon, the shrimp shrimpalanti. And you be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The shrimp, the shrimp shrimpal. Yeah, that that one. I'll have that one. Um, and can you make the <laughs> margaritas and, and nice and dress it up nice in a nice cup in a nice little glass or whatever? We don't want the original glass. The spoochie bougie time me and courtney it's a meeting for this scene and you know she did not like the ghetto to be brought in any scene so make sure you have the good glasses <laughs> girl you ain't want to say that shrimp like a mud country ass. <laughs> that was funny to me i was like she did not want to say that everybody didn't pull that one so i understand because when i be saying things in foreign i'd be like what the what restaurant we at i never heard this word ever like is this German? Like, I don't understand. Wash, wash, wash. Like, what is that? Uh, I had that. <laughs> what, hold on, matter of fact, what is that? All that word and just to be like fish and chips. You serious? This man, you had all them words to say some fish and chips. Yeah, I don't want that though. Do, what y'all got? Do, what's what's a burger y'all got? What burger y'all got? Oh, we. This is the burger. The alapacho pesachroja. And you be like, what? <laughs> All that just say a classic burger on the house, a classic bur uh, house burger. I don't want to eat here no more. <laughs> Let me just go down to the down the street somewhere. But um, that's that's my little OCD part. But I'm sorry, in my um, yeah, I be ranting too much. But anyway, <laughs> Marlo talks to Courtney. Um. What did I say? Oh, I'm sorry. Mar uh, Marlo thanks Courtney um, for the guy that she helped set her up with that um, is going to help clear a record. And he said, yeah, it's a process of things. So it has to go through, you know, a little bit of chains or whatever. But I'm going to get you set up and start the application, I think she said, he said, for as far as expunging. I'm like, girl, you couldn't find this information on your own. You could find a piece to keep yourself at peace after your break-in, which is, 
is it real <laughs> is that a legend you know you know some pookies in them so i don't know was that a setup for a storyline and a sympathy card to be played uh, neither here nor there atlanta is obviously a place of a lot of violence as well so they say um so i can't go off that but your track record is not tracking <laughs> with anything real so um real real low <laughs> but not real real high but um so i don't know i don't know but you can do no research on anybody to help expunge you can start with googling how to expunge your record that will probably send you links to people that you can actually go and have a consultation with about steps to expunge it you can see the requirements uh, maybe it's a statuary period you know timeline period of you know you could get some kind of explanation guide of how to expunge it girl i think you just you're lazy and you just wanted somebody that was in the know and in contact with somebody directly to help it get expunged and ex uh, expedited faster it's you're a user it's, it, it is what it is you're a user you don't want to do nothing on your own you want everything to be given to you but you say that you come from foster child right from being a foster um child and most of the foster most or some foster kids like that to me when they're on their own it's like they literally had to fight for everything they had you didn't fight anything you you didn't fight anything you just open them legs allegedly <laughs> open them legs and use that your puss as the maximum profit as it could at the time and maybe still now who knows uh now you're getting checked so maybe not so much um but you you use what you had to get what you needed um and nobody's knocking you and do what you do um because most women are doing that now for free you know getting stuff out of uh, go, giving men stuff and they're not getting no money no nothing like cannot pay no rent no nothing you know so and i mean just a living boyfriend forever and doing nothing you know so understand that but it's like let's be real like you you just probably did good at saving your money when he was giving you that stuff so i mean but anyway that's just lazy you're a user friend you're you're literally a user friend you want somebody to do the homework for you it's like come on i've seen better foster people make it out and built themselves up from literally nothing literally from group homes and all the crap that happens there especially since i'm so close to that when it comes to my dad working for child and family services for all of his like since he was 19 literally as an intern he went from the bottom and worked his way up and we have seen so many foster kids and actual like you know um the social workers getting them from their home you know the judges all that we seen all that the kids with lice in their head and my dad like uh uh y'all don't get too close excuse me gotta get some tissue nose is a running got the air on too dag on cold but literally um we've seen a lot as kids we were we were around a lot of that stuff um so it's like yeah and they even pull themselves up from the from the bootstrap so i don't make no excuses like that um, then we see Sanya meeting with Candy at OLG, and I was like, oh, Candy hair looks so cute, um, and pretty, so natural and curly like it is. It was so cute and curly. I remember getting all the, the, before I had these, and I could still do it with these for real, for real, because I'm vicious like that, but, because I curl my own ears. Um, but yeah, um, I used to always get the flexi rods all the time, young. So I was just like, oh, that is so cute. And it make me want my flexi rods now. Now I'm going to put a whole bunch of cold rods in my head. And I'm going to do every one, every little strand in cold rods. And then I'm going to take them all out so it could be a cute little style. Um, once I can be able to dye my hair, that is. Um, and I was like, her hair looks so lovely in those curls. That's the best natural hairstyle you wore on that show so far um candy calls saying you out as being a fence rider he said uh I, I don't understand how you can call me out but you're not calling Marla out when she's definitely dead wrong she's dead wrong and she was like i'm not a fence rider i just don't want to be in the middle of 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 a friendship with Marla and a friendship with you and that's that 
Like that was that for me. Girl, then don't be my friend. Just be on the other side. Cause I don't do that friendship like that. I don't do you saying everything about me in the confessionals, which I don't know, but I will drag you at reunion. You said everything confessionals, but you won't say nothing about what Marlo was doing in the confessional at all. You keep trying to explain to everybody in the confessionals to take up for Marlo. Like, well, she, all she was trying to say, all she want, I don't know why Candy was, she was actually the aggressor. She, that's a, that's what a friend do. Yo ass not my friend, stay on the other side of the fence. Don't need no new friends. Like she said, T.I. was saying, when I see you in the streets, nigga, you don't know me. <laughs> Period. Don't wave at me, nothing. Don't court me, me, nothing. Don't do nothing like that. Um, Marlo wants, uh, what did I say? Yeah, then we flash back to Marlo, um, still talking to Courtney, talking about something. She, she could have just did, um, she, she could have just even asked me, girl, what's your sister number? <laughs> what's your sister number? Uh, to do what? <laughs> to call your sister about your, your nephew, about the nephew that just worked at my place, that no longer works at my place. I'm supposed to give her a grief call. Girl, bye, that's your job. If anything, I'm going to give you something to send to her. Hey, um, here, Marlo, I'm sending this to you. So can you get that to the family, please? Something like that. If anything, if I wanted to, but I'm not going to directly speak with any family. When somebody passes away and somebody family that you do not have direct personal contact or, you know, no relationship with, you do not... <laughs> First of all, overwhelm them and press them out with, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Nobody wants to hear that. Sh Nobody wants to hear that at all. So you're going to give the family space, period. And especially of a of a, um, of a, a, a former worker that does no longer work at OLG for months <laughs> that you didn't even hardly know was on the payroll, young. Yes, Christmas party picture. Dude, I don't really know you like that. I just remember posing with a couple employees what we do but okay girl go somewhere with that now you're putting on 20 <laughs> on 10 literally why is this food going around my car like why i'm trying to figure out why of all places you need to go around this car of all places these got away kids i swear Candy actually breaks down, in which I was so mad she broke down in front of Sonya. Like, she, that hoe don't deserve none of that. What in the world? What in the world? What is these kids doing? Do you, do you see that? <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is why they be on our black kids. Let me hurry up and do this review. This is some freaking ghetto age, Literally. But, um... Candy breaks down about her brother's passing. She was like, "My brother passed at fifteen, the age of fifteen. When I was the age, when I was at the age of fifteen, um, and she, which is why she basically describes why I'm not that uh, sympathetic, uh, sympathetic friend. Like I'm not that one to just going to be like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, like I'm cracking up now, and I'm not going to be like that because if I be like that, it's going to take me back, and then I'm going to not move on because I'm going to be still thinking about the pain of losing him. I'm not going to do that. I already been through that. I, I lived through that. I had to get through that. Now I got through that. Life moves on. Life continues. Now I have to make myself continue on with the life that I have without him. I'll meet him someday again. I'll see him someday again. And that's what I hope and pray. Um, but I can't keep living the death part of the grief or whatever for myself. I cannot keep living like that. And that's what she was saying. She said, I'm not that friend that's going to be, I do not know what to say when people freaking, uh, and I'm definitely like that. I'm so comatose to death and my family members being of older age, especially on my dad's side, and it was going one after the other, one after the other, funeral after funeral after funeral. And that's just like, it comatose me where now that I see other people um, going through that, it's like, yeah, he just passed. And it's just be like this. Like, I, I don't have anything else to say. It's like, oh, yeah, that's, that's sad. I'm sorry. 
I don't know, like I don't, like I'm so comatose to it. So I just don't know. And then you don't want to give nobody, I'm so sorry for your loss. If it's anything I can do when you're not, you, when you're damn sure no, you're not going to do it. Don't be making up false promises like that. You know, you're not going to do it. I'm praying for you. Two praying hands on Facebook, three praying hands on Facebook. One, one, two, three praying hands. It's not going to prove that you praying for me. I don't even know when the last time any person has said a prayer. I know I pray when I get behind the, the, the wheel. I'd be like, God, please take the wheel. You know, whatever happens, please take this wheel, God. Like, I know I do that all the time. When I'm somewhere and I'm just like, you know, antsy, my anxiety or something of like, whether it's a, a something coming through, an application, uh, uh, anything, any anything, really any feeling. At any time, wherever I'm at, I'm always talking to God in my head because your heart and your mind and your body and your soul is the church, not a freaking actual structure. That's just a temple where you go and have church and you praise. But you can, your your church is in your mind, heart, body, and soul, and you can have church with God at any moment of the day. So that's for that. For anybody who didn't know, um, a church is just a temple. <laughs> you can praise anytime, <laughs> at any hour. And watch the prayer closet. If you don't know about it, get some no. Um, but yeah, I'm just not that type of friend either. So she understands. She basically act like she understands. She with the tissue be like, oh, my makeup, cup, dang, my makeup, dang, cause half of it's coming off. It was. Um, and she said she choose to push past the tears, and she's more like a motivational friend instead. She like a I'll do. I'll help you do this or get through this. Uh, you can do it and such and such and such. She's that type of friend. So I understand. Uh, Ralph and Drew had a cute little sexy um, video practice scene or whatever. Um, like a little sexy flirty girl chair dance. <laughs> and I'm like, are we still doing it? Uh, are we still doing music videos when you... It, uh... It's giving you still in 2000s. Um, like you're doing Honey or something. Like... Are you still doing a chair dance like you did in um, Step Up? Sean Paul, Keisha Cole video? It looked like the same chair type dance except for you added a man. And and you was just bouncing on like, what was you doing? Like, I think, was you doing a Cardi B freaking performance at VMAs? Because that was boring as hell. I hope that's not the, I hope that's not a routine. But, you know, it was just cute seeing them all, um, you know, bonding or whatever but i i don't think it's going to mean much at the moment because we all know that they're headed to divorce but at the same time i don't know about this divorce or not like is it real i don't know because the chemistry they're showing on this show is different from them running down to the courthouse and trying to pick who's going to get the application in first it, it doesn't show this at all so i'm confused uh, and then also, um, Ralph is the backup plan now because the other guy, the abs guy, he double booked on another shoot so that, you know, he'll have to go to the first priority because that's probably way more dollars than some freaking Drew Sedora's music video is paying. And I would too. So yeah, he's like, how does it feel to be the backup? He's like, <laughs> no words really. Next. That wasn't that great of a scene. Um. Kenya visits the doctor to ask about her overall health. Um, also, she asks if she can have another baby. The doctor was like, no, I don't think so. Um, she wants to use her frozen eggs that she had with uh, made with um, Mark Daly that they signed papers for. So that's another thing that you want to ask your divorce girl. Like, eh, I don't think you want to give him no option of you having another child with him just for the sake that you don't want to look like you have a bunch of baby different uh, baby dads you you don't want to look like that and that's the image that you i'm sorry <laughs> whatever there is a drew sador there is an eva they end up having other kids with um their new man get over it, girl there's also candy burrs uh, with Riley and then she made some more kids with another guy it's okay to have two minimum come on but when you get the three to four to five to six like you know different situations it depends on the situation did both of them die you know or um 
you know, or did he step out when he was, you know, in the merit thick of things or whatever? Like, that's understandable, but I, I understand you want Riley to have the same father or whatever, but at what cost? Mark Daly still being in intertwined into your life, which he should not be? Uh, no. And then for him to be able to have some piece of anything else you gain from here on out from that embryo, um, being inserted with his name attached to that now he can go to you for child support <laughs> girl you can keep that you can keep that uh she would i said riley um she will have another <laughs> another sibling from another dad i'm sorry um and the, the doctor was like their uh divorce is nasty are you sure about that and she was like it will be a hard conversation but i do not want her to have two dads i mean um uh, two siblings to be um with two different dads girl get over that um she playing with us too for real for real it's like starting to be like kenya you keep laying your bed making your bed worse and worse and worse so i kind of like over it now and i'm not about to care i, I never really care <laughs> but you know i started to care a little bit and uh, i'm about to not care no more like literally you 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 do this and I definitely am skipping over all Kenya Moore, Mark Daly segments because I don't give a goddamn about um, what he do from here on out, you know, other than like abuse or something like that, you know. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give a goddamn, you know what I'm saying? Like literally, you doing it to yourself now. Um, the doctor said her delivery was the scariest she ever experienced in her 32 years of practice, and I was like, oh my god this is me because when kenya said they said she lost a lot of blood and um she almost lost her life too i was like this is exactly me like from entering triage i had something attached to my blood two things attached to my blood but they saw it upon my last blood work upon entering triage and then i went through all the you know um making me uh, break my water and then trying to get the delivery started and finally getting the delivery started my son's heart rate dropping when i'm nine centimeters nine centimeters one centimeter to go to push and i'm trying to just push and stuff and start pushing and then this heart rate drop and then they're like oh if it drop again you're gonna be rushed into like 15 nurses and stuff gonna come in here and they're gonna rush you to um get you ready for um um, the C-section, emergency C-section. And I'm just like, no, just one more centimeter. Just one more centimeter, please. Like, I was crying. I was like, please, one more centimeter. I don't want to be cut. I don't want to be cut. And then his heart rate dropped again. All the nurses came in. Like, it was like 15 of them. Ran in my room. Put the freaking cap on me. Everything. Put the, everything on me. Uh, and then um, they ran me into the room. Had delivered my son. Then after that, my son was delivered. He's, his heart rate was still going up and down. So they had, I, he never sat on my chest or nothing. I just saw him go by meekly because I was just shaking the death. Like I was out. I was almost to the pass out blackout mode. And so I couldn't feel anything. It was so cold. I felt like death. If somebody had, if, if the feeling of getting shot and you feeling everything is cold around you and you just shaking, 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 and shaking, 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 and you just feel like life is leaving your body. That's how I felt with the C-section. Like it is so ridiculous. Like, it's the worst horrible feeling in the world. Like nobody would ever want to be pressed to have a C-section. Go natural. <laughs> I wanted to do that. I could not do that because my son had the tubes wrapped around his neck twice, throwing somersaults in my stomach at the last minute. Yeah, but he's here, thankfully, and I'm here. But I almost lost my life. I lost about two paints of blood. They said, and then on top of that, my blood had two things attached to it. I I'm old. Uh, I think I'm O negative or O positive because I think my mom's O negative. I always get this mixed up, you guys. But I have a letter from American Red Cross that shows like I got to show this letter everywhere I go for now. I don't keep one in my car just in case something happened and they'll know that this is attached to my blood. So if anything happened, they need to have a fix immediately. So that's that. And I spent the rest of the five days in the hospital trying to get american red cross or any pl other blood bank to match my blood which would not harm the other bloods would not eat up the, the other blood chromosomes 
and uh would not prevent me to have worse uh go into coma stroke or death so it was a slow build up to me iron bag then transfusion and a lot of them monitor me because they didn't know it. any reaction could have came from me uh doing a transfusion with the things attached to my blood it could have just ate up all the blood and and i could have yeah like i said coma stroke or death it could have been one or the other not just my stomach bleeding out it could it, it was going to happen with that so i was like oh my god this is so scary and this was what scared me now and i want another sibling like at least another girl but if i had another boy whatever like i just i did want a complete family but it's just like i'm so scared i'm so scared um and that's what's a fear of mine right now um so i related to that scene that scene really touched on my heartstrings especially because my friend that passed away having her first child um and the baby detached and she was like had an emergency i guess they were trying to do emergency c-section the baby detached and they both passed away. And I went to her funeral and the baby was sitting right on her chest. I was like, oh my God, cannot, cannot take this. And it's just sad. She was just celebrating her one year anniversary. So that just re-triggered re everything I felt when I had my um, son and how I was literally about to not see anything in his life because I was about to be dead on the table when he was good, I was not good. So it just makes you think about that when you start to get of age and you want to make a family and it's just sad. But anyway, let's move on to something a little lighter. It just it just re-triggers me every time um, I hear situations like that. Um, so me and Kenya relate on that issue. Um, and furthermore, Kenya, forget that. <laughs> Surrogacy is the way to, to go, but not with that fool. Uh, so it was time for Sheree's Gucci brunch. Keep it Gucci brunch. Yay. Mm -hmm. Nay. Um, Sanya arrives first, um, and they, and she see that it's assigned seating. Uh, Sheree says she want to put, uh, she wants to assign seats to separate candy from her friends. That's like, let's be clear. That's basically what she want to do. She, all she wants to do is separate. I want to separate the girls because they seem to always back each other up or say something and and have to always come to somebody's uh you want to separate candy from her friends and and them cutting y'all off and saying what's what you know that's what real friends do so i think you need to back back on that like she always say back 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 but um uh, courtney candy and drew arrives um I said Candy's face when Drew was saying, we need to love on Marlo. Marlo needs a hug. She needs a hug. And Candy was like, <laughs> I don't know the, the fat neck uh, look, but it was like. <laughs> like, not I. Look that bitch. <laughs> like, that's how Candy was looking like. Not I. I don't, she don't need no hug from me. I ain't getting no hug from me. Not going to be a hug. Not talking about a hug. Not talking about love. Love what? Love myself. Love this plate. Love this bottom of mimosas. Um, love it. Keep it Gucci. Um, <laughs> and Candy asked for Marlo's seat to be switched to the other side. She says, it's too close to me. No, Sandy was like, what? Too close? Too close? Yeah, it's it's too close to me. It's is we ain't talk about nothing, and it's too soon because that event was not long ago. It was just around the corner. That's too close to be sitting that close to me. We not there at all. I don't even think we ever be. Basically, Marlo arrives. Uh, everybody comes in with their Gucci on, and they produce producers took this time to um, let Marlo drag them pretty much describe all the girls' outfit in Marlo's fashion corner. Like how she get that? You she had a freaking uh, two hubcaps on her ears, and she she get the fashion corner uh, corner and get the freaking drag people. But okay, so she first descri describes in this order. Kenya talking about some uh they she when she come in the producer shady self going to talk about some not a Gucci bag. All right, whatever. She says she's not about name brands and brands and all that, but she was all like Kenya's look like thrifted Gucci. <laughs> she not about brands, she might have got the thrifted Gucci. Whatever, it's Gucci, right? 
Uh, Drew said, uh, Drew's looking like a Gucci handyman. <laughs> to like a throw up amount of Gucci Blah, bombing in Gucci literally I hate when people over over show labels like Gucci 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 shoe Gucci watch Gucci earring Gucci Gucci glasses Gucci dick Gucci like okay god dang can something be playing can we get some vans on the bottom of your feet or something like some girl nobody wants to see all that Gucci it's like a throw up amount literally she look like a Gucci tourist in the Gucci factory I'm going to the Gucci factory today. Let me put all Gucci on. But um, she said Sheree looks great, but she looked like she's about to give a dis uh, uh, disposition. <laughs> disposition. I was like, uh, she ain't lying. <laughs> she ain't lying though. She is not lying. Uh, she did look like she about to give the greatest speech of her life and the greatest disposition uh, disposition of her life. Uh, oh, I can't even talk. I sound like my. <laughs> this is just called Rush Rush and Tide Tide, Week and Weekend. But uh, yeah, like she do, like she about to get the greatest one of her life because uh, she was making a whole bunch of speeches there at that brunch. Let's 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 be clear. And she looked hot as hell. That's what I was seeing on that. Um, she's talking about some candy. Look like she about to go bowling. And are you the captain of the bowling league? <laughs> She did look like she was, hey, what do you like? Yeah, you got you on that one. You did look like you was part of the bowling league. That was that was cute, though. It was a cute little shady one. See, it could have been cute. This season could have been cute if you had shade like this going on in the joint. But you got so much freaking darkness with yourself. And it's, it's crazy. Because um, that was a cute little, you know, Marlo's Corner thing. Um, she's saying Sanya looked like she um, ran right and to that outfit, uh, sample size Gucci right off the rack, which it looked like it's true. Sanya looked like she just like, oh my God, it's an event going on today. I gotta find Gucci, Gucci. Oh, this is Gucci. Oh, this is a cute Gucci dress. Let me get this Gucci dress. Like no thought at all. Just whatever look cute first. And you know, she could fit in anything. She probably took it right off the mannequin. Like it looks just like that. Um, and I was like, where Courtney at? Oh, you ain't putting her on there because, um, one she new to the um franchise as a friend right now or whatever she is and uh she helping you with that guy and you don't want to roast her too big because you still need her because you a user and you until you don't need her no more you ain't gonna drag her huh Cause that's what's happening oh she get a pass but anyway she said all together we look like a uh we look like a bootleg girl group <laughs> I was like, you ain't never lie. Y'all do look like cops and saber hoes. Um, and I said, why Courtney makeup sliding? Courtney makeup was sliding like hell. Literally. Um, Sheree does a fake tear up and act like she want the woman to be friends. You know how y'all be making fun of Candy? Now, y'all better have some memes going for um Sheree, too. Because y'all be like, every time Cat, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> and, and it's like, uh, you know, all that little, I don't know how to do that freaking cry. Because I just don't cry like that. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? She, she It's something in the throat, and it's just like, it's on, it on, I'm trying to, uh, uh. Like that, like that candy cry. Oh, do the charade one too. Cause she do something sort of like candies. Where it's kind of still the same tight. Cause I want you, cause I really want you guys to, and I, I, she do the same thing. I want y'all to get the memes out when charade start crying. Uh, and she's talking about stuff. I want y'all bitches suggestions. <laughs> Uh, but she was like, oh, y'all need to be the better communicator, better listener, and all that. So, Candy, we want. She, she was like, so, um, Candy, we, we, uh, Candy, um, what about you and Courtney? And then she was like, uh, yeah, that was a dumb conversation to begin with. That was a dumb fight to begin with. So, yeah, I am over that. And I, uh, um, you know, it's nice that you reached out to me. You was the only one to, well, not the only one, but that's what I'm saying. But, uh, <laughs> you actually came and stepped forward to me and said, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, um, that this happened to you tonight. 
and um, I'm just so sorry, you know, and she appreciated that, and Courtney said, I, um, you know, sorry for the dumb arguments we had, too, um, and Candy was like, it was about nothing, like, shit, girl, <laughs> and she, like, she wanted to get some backtrack for, to that part, but she's like, let me just keep it going, because we on the right road, the right road, um, and they just made up, and then, um, Sanya want to take this time to call Kenya out and say, why does she have uh, to be hot and cold on her friendship with her? Um, and Kenya said, because Sanya, I don't know if I fully trust you because of your little fake butt response on Watch What Happens Live show. Like any other friend would not like that. Obviously, you know, that question is a baiting question, right? So why would you say anything uh, to assault me in that question? You, you don't assault uh marlo you make a good little response for marlo and anybody else but for me you're gonna say um well from is what the described and da, 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 da. like girl no you could have kept it cute and said anything like well i know she looks good and that's that i mean whatever it is she look good <laughs> whether you believe it or not it's, she look good you could have had anything that said but girl you making excuses here you go backtracking again in front of my face and then if you was feeling gangster on Watch What Happens Live, so your ass is still on the sidelines. I'm on the fence with your ass. Like, you on the fence with everything else we say. Um, they asked if Candy and Marlo would ever be, this is what we really came for, if they were able to squash their differences. Um, Marlo said, she's in a good place. And Candy, like, likewise, ho, I'm in a good place. I don't need your friendship. Girl, when we see each other in the street, nigga, you don't know me. You know, pretty much. Um, Marlo starts to retail with her lies and throws Drew on the bus. And, it was not me that talked about your murdered, my my cousin um being shot or shooting and stuff like that. That was Drew. Now we all know the producers made Drew even ask that question. She even asked shakingly, um, Candy, um, what? So what's going on? Um, with the 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 incident, the incident, the incident. <laughs> Uh, you what you mean the shooting and Marlo you did say that when she said the incident uh, oh you mean the shooting at o L L G <laughs> or the shooting <laughs> oh loud and wrong girl you did put yourself a part of it Candy let her know um, Drew said the girl don't be attached don't attach my name to your triggers <laughs> please don't try attach me to your uh, triggers and then Ken Kenya says out loud, you can't keep a friend when you keep talking sh about them. You cannot keep a friend if you apologize one day and then drag them the next and then say, can you send my apology? I ain't mean that. I was just feeling some type of way. I ain't really mean that. You be like, okay, I accepted this last time. And then this last time that you go on the podcast, like, them bitches now and nah, nah, nah. Friendship over. No coming back. Don't even, I don't care if you're bad. Ain't no coming back, ho. And Candy was just getting frustrated. Um, like, yeah, I am not giving you the time of day. Candy was letting her speak. Not she was not talking. She was antsy. She was looking at her phone. Like, I feel like it's gonna be a pop two of me snapping on this hoe. So let me go to my messages because I am not listening to this conversation. And then Marlo gets frustrated and walk off because she can't take the heat of what Kenya's saying to her. And talk about stuff she can't speak over um Drew or Kenya. Um, this charade blames Candy for having um her people, which is her friends, to speak up for her and not herself. Uh, she was speaking though, and she was listening. Didn't you say? Didn't you say you need to put on your listening caps and be best better listeners and communicators? But Candy was sitting there saying, "Go ahead, keep keep t telling your story. Like keep keep going with what you're saying." I'm listening to what you're saying, even even with them talking or whatever. She still was saying, I'm listening. Go ahead. Keep continuing. And she wasn't saying shit. Like, literally, you were saying the same drama over and over again. Um, and then Drew and Kenya was dragging on it, <laughs> literally. Marlo leaves because she can't take the heat, pretty much. Sheree follows Marlo out the park, to the parking lot. Follow the leader, asshole. Like, what are you? What are you? You can't leave your brunch without um Marlo being there. She begs Marlo to come back in there. I'm gonna let you talk. I'm gonna tell them that they gonna have to let you talk, whatever. They come back to the table and resume where Marlo was freaking trying to say, um, put, 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 put it out then. 
Like, look, literally, spit that shit. Like, girl, what you saying? You retracting and saying the whole thing. Now you retracting. I ain't saying nothing about shooting. Clearly, you said, oh, the shooting? That's you saying shooting. Dumbass. Like, literally, what, what other lies you want to put out there? Candy basically is keep ignoring her while texting. Sanya starts preaching. Candy turned and, and um, Sanya was and gathered Sanya whole soul up and said, girl, I don't need you to be her lawyer right now. Don't don't tell me about no lawyer tree. Like, I don't need you to be her, her, her defender. Like, literally, let her talk on her own. You just said shut my people up. My people, not my friends, but my people. But she can have a friend that coaches uh coaches her on the side while she ain't saying nothing back you saying something for her but you want ken kenya and drew to not say nothing for me you see how this double ass standard go that's that's funny as hell um and candy's like look girl don't preach to me and your questions your directions all that that you want to talk about to your friend over there i don't need no dad gonna talk about what i want to do how i want to move and what friendship i don't want to have in my life, you talk to your friend about that. Shit. Like she the one disrespected me. I ain't do nothing to her. Um, and I know the way I took it, cause I know the way she meant it, and I know what she did, and I know what she said, and I know she what she wanted to happen. So on that note, f you, fuck them flowers, and uh, <laughs> literally I don't give a crap about the flowers. Y'all, all the flowers called. You could have called my. All she wanted you to do was call her sister, and then Sonya going bang on the table. Ah. I just want no. It's about the good, of the, and then Candy. You seen Candy back to the side, like okay. Now I, I put Marlo over there, but now I might need you to move to the other side of the table because when you slap the table when doing all this hand stuff by me, and you close to me and you trying to talk to me, Sanya, I might slap that ass right beside me. So I'm gonna need you to scoot down to the seat that Marlo was going to go to because. You moving and smacking the table and moving your hands in front of my face. And then Candy, I saw that to the side. She was like, and she turned to be ready. Because I will grab that ass right there in front of my face. And I I know that feeling. Like, girl, you trying to be fake friends with me. You trying to tell me something. I'm not listening to you. I don't care what you're saying. You're never going to get me to think whatever... <laughs> You're gaslight, trying to gaslight me about, period. I've got, I got my one-track mind, and you're not breaking it. And then you get all mad and just... I'm just trying to... Girl, don't do that now, because then you want to be the next victim. So you back back, or you're going to be the next victim. That's exactly what happened at that table. She was like, fuck them flowers. Give a damn about the flowers or her. Like, she made it that story, and that's what it's going to be. And when your sister go back and watch this... How you used and exploited your nephew for this? You should be a guy that gonna shame yourself. That had nothing to do with me. Uh, Marlo calls her selfish and privileged. <laughs> oh, 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 Candy, the self control that she have, I need <laughs> because woo, it would have been some <laughs> bottles and some mimosas, all right. <laughs> um, the brunch was not a win at all. <laughs> And Sheree thinks she was um, halfway there to a win because of a fake ass Courtney, fake apology to Candy or fake love. I see where you at now, the Candy, but not really. And then um, Kenya and Sanya putting it on ice, putting it on ice is not a win. She's just saying, I still don't trust your ass, but I'm gonna see how you move from here on out. That's not a win. <laughs> she was like, I'm gonna pat my back anyways. Yeah, you do that. You think everything a win. You think just because you showed your fashion by, she, by Sheree is a win. But it ain't nothing online, girl. <laughs> the end. Bye-bye, y'all. <laughs> These are silly hoes, Yang. But um, like and subscribe, y'all. Make sure y'all hit that notification bell. And I'll be here for all of Real Housewives of Atlanta episodes, especially for... Uh, this season because yeah I think I did like an episode or two throughout the years and then I'm just like uh, big brother time and you know lifetime a lot of stuff going on so I never did a full episode but I definitely will um, but if it's a, a dumb season don't expect me to do, do that I will skip seasons if it's dumb and just watch as a fan alright though but I holler this video is almost an hour and have a great oh juneteenth i meant to say that happy juneteenth to everybody and make sure you uh, be
be beautiful, bountiful, blessed, black, and all. Um, see y'all niggas on the next Juneteenth. All right.